but certainly last week, um, it's, it's a shame anybody has to lose um, just because I know how hard each team played and, and I know how well Hopkins played. Um, I tip my, my cap to them. Uh, candidly, I, I felt like they controlled a lot of the play today um, and that's credit to them. Um, and uh, I, I give our guys a lot of credit even though it wasn't going as well as we'd like. I, I felt like Danny really kind of bailed us out. Uh, when we made some mistakes, and, and, and not even so many mistakes, I felt like Hopkins made plays, so I want to give them their credit. Um, but Danny kind of bailed us out at some times, and um, I think we made some timely plays. Um, certainly, you know, staring down two goals uh, late in, in the fourth quarter, um, you know, we made some plays when we had to, and then we kind of hung in there, um, and then, you know, just couldn't get into a rhythm for a good portion of the day. Um, but I thought Austin coming in in, in the second half, uh, Coach Barber has done a really good job with those guys, and. Uh, he came in and gave us, gave us a huge lift today, and, and that can't get lost in the wash. But, uh, you know, the ability for our guys just to hang in there and hang in there and, and our crowd today, um, there are so many people in red that were there to support us, and, and that meant a lot to us. So uh, thankful that we won. Certainly a lot to work on, but I'm proud of our guys, uh, certainly for our, our, our seniors uh, to win four straight championships, and, and candidly, the guys to my right uh, to win four Big Ten championships and, and an ACC championship is, is, is something they can always be proud of. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Four Gates Consulting. Call Viner Four Gates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C. Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Coach and Tim, what have you seen from Will Snyder at development? He had the game time goal on the... Uh Game-winning goal. Yeah. Uh, Will's been, you know, he hopped into the, uh, with me and Bubba, you know, middle of the season, the past couple of games. Uh, and he is, you know, he's always in our year. Um, he's trying to learn off us, knowing that me and Bubba have had a lot of, uh, a lot of chemistry throughout the year. We, you know, we played together in the fall. Um, Giblin kind of was in the lineup. And then, uh, you know, just to kind of mix it up, bring something different to the line. Not that, you know, Collins not, wasn't bringing anything. Collins was just a different type of player. Um, so Will's uh, more than a top guy. And uh, you know he's just trying to play off us. Um, and now you know the, now that he's kind of learned that that how to play with us, um, he's kind of bringing a different element, uh, kind of his game to the lineup now that he's kind of a little more comfortable. Um, he, I saw him kind of break out of his shell in the Penn State game. Uh, I think he had another two goals. So uh, is is uh, he's a pretty dynamic shooter, nice dodger. So um, for him to kind of break out of his shell, especially in a game like this, and uh, the last two goals of the game was huge. Um, I think it's really going to help his confidence. And, and uh, yeah, I, I couldn't be more proud of Will. Uh, you know, two years of development on the scout team and, and just, just continuing to work. And, and he helped us win a lot of games that he never played in the last, his first two years. Um, but that's part of what I think we take a lot of pride in. You know, even talking to Patrick Stevens and some of the guys I know, sometimes the players come in and they talk about how important the scout team is and they really believe it. We don't tell them what to say. Uh, we know that the week going in, there's a lot of prep, and it's hard for a young guy to know you're not going to play, but we ask you to dodge over and over again and maybe be somebody else. And uh, just the guys, when they're, we're playing against Bryce and Curtis and some of the other good players, there's potential to develop if you, if you hang in there and you look at it as an opportunity to get better. And, and Will and Colin Giblin are, are two prime examples of guys that, you know, for two, three years that maybe to play a lot, but... You know, they get in there and they're prepared because they played against good players. Um, and But it's hard in a day and age where, you know, kids want instant gratification and, you know, usually it's kind of a, a, a now generation. So to have them just keep working and keep their head down, not knowing a thing, anything maybe would happen, is a credit to them and how much they care about the team. John, when you look at everything that happened today, you get 13 saves, you win about half of the face-offs, you only have seven turnovers. Is this... In terms of the thing, those sorts of controllable things, the sort of game you were looking for, and a good sign for moving into May. We we really felt like um, some things had to improve. Um, you know, obviously since we've been in Big Ten play, first and foremost, faceoffs have not been great. I think we're at 37 percent, and uh, we were great in the in the conference last year. Uh, in this game last year, we were six of 18. So. Um, you know, Coach Barbridge and, and the Hawkpin, those guys went back to work this week. And, and even, it's funny with, um, you know, some of the early face-offs and Justin, like Justin actually won the clamp a few times and we didn't get the ball. 
Um, but but the one that, uh, that that he did get, you know, they scored, and then we came down and scored. So even though Justin didn't win a lot, he got us a goal, and, and obviously there were only seven um, going into overtime. So that's 50% of our offense. So that one faceoff in itself was was super valuable. But um, obviously we feel great about Danny. Um, he's just so consistent and steady. Um, he does a great job. He's doing more than saving the ball and getting us organized. Uh, I felt like defensively we had to bounce back. Uh, the last couple weeks we've been carved up. Uh, there's a lot of pride in that locker room. They know the standard for Maryland defense. Uh, Coach Bernhardt's done a, just an incredible job this year of uh, just working with some young guys. We had a lot of new parts out there. Um, and I felt like our leadership this week in practice was better. Um, you saw you were there last week. You know how State jammed the ball in there, made us pay. Um, everybody saw it. Um, it was disappointing. Uh, we were at times maybe not as organized as we could have been, and we had some, some, some gaffes, and that's on me for not getting them ready. Uh, so we went back to work. We, we were all humbled, and uh, we just were like, all right, let's try to get better and, and give those guys credit to, to come up here and only give up seven goals is, is a credit to those guys. And that's seven goals with, with basically five periods. Dan, uh, Danny and Timmy, uh, if I'm not mistaken, I think you guys are 4-0 at home with. What does that mean to you to come? In, now, you only played Hopkins twice, but you won the big title here uh, a couple of years ago. What does that mean to go to, you know, come to Baltimore to, like, the Mecca of lacrosse here and come away with those wins? Uh, I think didn't we lost my freshman, freshman year. year. So we're 4 1. Here? Yeah. 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 My freshman year. Our freshman year. Okay. Five years ago. Well, five years ago. Yeah, five years ago. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Mm -hmm. I've been around here half, half a decade. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think it's. Uh, we come into these games, um, I think coach prepares us well for these types of games. Uh, I was kind of telling the team, uh, you know, every day we go, coach, coach will say, you know, uh, red team, kind of the, the, the guys that are playing against the, sta uh, the scout team in practice, they'll say uh, red team's down by two to three minutes left, and that was exactly what happened today. So I think coach, um, along with the other coaches, kind of build this, this type of uh, environment, you know, this, you know, it, it feels like a game in practice. So, uh, you know, when it comes down to the wire, everyone's calm, cool, collected. Um, and I think that really helps because this is, you know, when this game comes around, it's huge. You saw it today in the crowd. But I think, uh, you know, guys like Bubba, guys like Roman, the young guys, you know, this, they, didn't, they didn't really blink at that because of the, the environment that's set in practice. Um, I think actually on the, on the way out to the, on the door, on the way out to the practice says overtime mentality. So that's kind of what we preach of going into practice. And that's exactly what it was today. Yeah, I would agree with Tim. Um, definitely our practice is the way our coach is structured and um, really prepares for kind of every sort of scenario. And we play it in a lot of different places, but um, I think our kind of comfort level here is a, is a big credit to our fans, um, all the people that support us. Um, I mean, you looked up in the stands today, and there's, there's a, a lot more red than there usually is at away games. Um, and, you know, our coaches always stress it. We're, we're a team that represents Maryland. We have Maryland across the chest. We represent, you know, the state as a whole, that kind of everybody that lives here. So. I think it's a big credit to our fans for kind of showing up, um, cheering us on, supporting us. Hey, John, when did you know Shaq was going to play? You were prepared all week for it? Yeah, we, we had no choice. You know, we, we just felt like it. We, we went back and forth. We had segments. And, you know, we had a short week, obviously, playing Sunday. And, and you're going to get it. I'm not complaining. Like, you know, if you have Sunday games, at one point you're going to have a short week. And so we obviously took Monday off. So we had three days, and, and we had to prepare for Shaq being out there and, and Shaq not being out there. Um, and it would have been foolish to, to not expect him to play. He's a senior. It's a last game, uh, regular season game. Um, he's a good petter. He's a, he's a terrific player and just a, a great person, too. So um, we kind of went more towards that plan. Um, we only really had a, a game and a half of, um, you know, half of the Penn State game. But, and then Michigan last week without him. So it was a lot easier just to kind of prepare for him and then deal with him not playing. Um, but that kid's a warrior. He, he's one of the best, um, you know, players, obviously, out there, and he's been that way for the last few years. Dan, kind of, to kind of go off what Tull was saying earlier, is this a bit of a gut check week for the defense? And, you know, how do you kind of evaluate a close lead that help keep those three attacking the football two goals in the three assists? Um, yeah, I think it was definitely a gut check. Um, like Coach said, um, we take a ton of pride in our defense at Maryland. You know, we've got you know, decades upon decades of great defensemen and great defense. Um, and, you know, the last couple of games we've been, uh, you know, getting torn up a little bit, uh, giving up a lot more goals than the standard is for our, for our defense. So um, we kind of worked all week. Our scout team did a great job. Um, they tore us up a little bit early on this week. 
Um, you know, we had we had our uh, some of our other guys play the play the band song anytime we got scored on, so um, <laughs> kind of got us ready for for playing here. Um, yeah, I think it was, a, it was it was a good gut check game, and I think our guys kind of uh, not rise to the occasion. We fell back in our training, um, but I think they played well today, and um, giving up seven goals is always a good thing. Yeah, it seemed like this game has a similar back and forth nature as last week's did. Why was this outcome different? If you could just portray maybe something was different on the sideline, or what, what was the difference there? Um, in terms of difference, I'd say I thought our energy was a little bit better today than it was last week. Um, you know, we kind of talked about it uh, last week at, at, at the end of the game how we kind of came out flat. I think the guys did a lot better job um, playing with a lot of energy, playing with emotion but not being emotional. Um, you know, I think. Having that game last week was a good experience to prepare us for this week. I think you know, guys just um, executed the way that we're used to. Time for one more, yes. Hey, guys, I know you have the most professional press conferences in the world, but how cool was it to be out there and how big of a rush was it to, to win that game? Uh, it's awesome. You know, this is, this is what you grow up playing for. These are, you know, the moments uh, just playing with my brother in the backyard that you dream of. Um, so it's awesome uh, just to come down here play an awesome game, awesome team, um, you know, two top ten teams. So to get a win uh, is awesome. To see the crowd, uh, that they're, they're just great. They're unbelievable. Just the way they travel, all of our fans, all of our friends, family, it's, it's, it's really a great experience. Uh, you, really, you really can't, you know, emulate something like this. Yeah. So it's just awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's the oldest rivalry in college across, the greatest rivalry in college across. I'd say one of the greatest rivalries in any sport. Um, and, you know, like Tim said, growing up, this is the kind of game you dream of. We had a bunch of guys on the sidelines saying, like, this is what we live for. We want it over time. And, uh, you know, it's just such a – two programs with such storied histories. I think it's just a great, great thing to be a part of. And uh, I'm happy I've been a part of it for five years. Yeah, I think we just have so, respect, so much respect for Hopkins and the rivalry. And, and to come up here and ever get a win is really hard. Um, and historically, it's not been um, a place that we've had, maybe had a lot of success. So. I'm happy for our kids and our players and certainly our fans and our alums and um, Turp Nation. They, they were great. I mean, we really needed that en energy. Um, there were some times we weren't great, and those people behind us were really loud, and it, it kind of helped us. It, it certainly did. So, um, again, just more than anything else, just happy for these guys. I guess I don't think too much about that stuff. Your, your wheels are always ticking trying to think about what's next. Mm -hmm. So, But seeing them smiling is what it's all about. Thanks.